Astros just looks like the nicer lineup to be on. I would rather uh, be playing that team, let's say. Yeah, I mean, I see where you come from. Asta from the first pick into the last pick, a clean rounding out their draft. Let's see if it pays off of a win in game one. Or if SA fans are going to have something big to cheer about. Yeah, both teams running out here. Interesting to see that neither of the teams are actually doing the smoke out for ward placements. Uh, so just chilling. Oh. That's especially interesting from an Asta perspective. Like sometimes what we see, we've been seeing them do, I say sometimes quite frequently, is they'll delay smoke and then go for a kill when they feel like they've got one or two stuns at their disposal. I, mean, I, I guess this lineup maybe isn't the, the clearest or easiest kill to get. Yeah, usually you make the read, is our level one stronger than theirs? And I, it's not completely clear cut in this uh, case. I mean, Pango can do a lot of damage. There's the avalanche from Tiny. So perhaps they don't, don't, don't see themselves as like clearly the favorites if they run into each other. Um, but it's cool to hear that they've been going for uh, a late smoke and kill potential because I, I complained earlier today that all teams just smoke, run up and place wards and then check, uh, check mid for vision like Pango is doing right now. Um, I feel like more teams should go for kills level one. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think the way Asta usually makes it work, they usually wouldn't be here top, they'd be bot. I've seen them frequently wrap around and, and catch the, the safe laner off guard. And they usually wrap really deep between the tier one and tier two to come from behind. That's interesting. Yeah, that, I mean, I certainly think that there's a lot of possibilities there to find people who go alone because currently most teams just smoke out and kind of cover the entire river with like one hero along like the entirety, just standing on choke points and smoke revealing. But if you manage to make a deep wrap round, then you could probably find kills. Definitely. Um, right now they're going to find a lane swap here. So Asta just looking for the favorable matchup. Want to dodge out that Sven and Tal as Monet is making his way bot. Yeah, that's a tri lane that you do not want to lane against uh, right now on Luna. I mean, it starts out as tri lane, expecting the Tiny to probably make his way down bottom, possibly, or even Lich. We'll see if they swap it. Yeah, I, I don't think you can keep it here long. I think this is actually the first game of cast where a team has even fought the idea of just parking for heroes in the lane at the beginning. I've seen it a little bit where they set up, usually when they have something like a, a Visage themselves, perhaps, or just a strong three-man. Uh-oh, Bane. He's in a bit deep. He's going to be blocked off. Nice move by Kajira. The follow-up stun should be good enough to get the kill on the bane. I say that. No. What's He's needed? running though. Windblade. That was getting uncomfortable. The soul assumption damage was adding up fast under K1. Yeah, the Visage, he, he enjoys. That's the funny part of Visage. Doesn't matter which team is doing the damage. Just as long as people are taking damage, he's there to, to dish out some soul assumptions for someone. So targeting down K1, good idea. And uh, Tiny now finally gonna make his move bottom as uh, Magnus is struggling a bit on this lane. You know what he is? He's, he's like that. that. Yeah, his CS is great though. Yeah, he's starting off well. I mean, just the whole point of like uh, the Visage, it kind of reminds you of that character that they, they stir the pot, they tell everyone like these these secrets that people have been saying about them, and then they have a smile creeping on their face as people start fighting. It is kind of yeah. funny to, to watch. And actually, the idea of it with Bane is quite nice, right? Like, Bane is able to sustain, but then also dish damage, so you should get a lot of soul assumption spam. That is true. We see another uh, kill down on bottom. Godira TP down here as well, so he doesn't have TP yet on uh, Tiny. On top. And this is... yeah, they're gonna find one here. Bizarre is just starting to prove quite the threat. And the brain sap, Soul Sunshine follow up. K1 is not having a good start in this lane. <laughs> Funny to see mid lane too. Puck just killed two water runes. He denied the bottom rune and he denied the top rune. <laughs> so uh, he doesn't like water. No hydration. It's been a long day. If you can't quickly beat them in a game just playing Doha, just, you know, first them out, right? <laughs> yeah, dehydrate them to death. Smart. Just Pango. Oh boy. He's thirsty right now. I uh, said so K1's not having a good start, but in fairness to him, he's doing really well in the CS department, even if it is coming uh, at the expense of a lot of pressure his way. Oh yeah, K K1 is having a, a good time, but he did get a lot of help there, and then lane swap as well, so XXS had to make that swap around him. It's hard to catch up when you aren't there at the start of the laning phase. Definitely. Yeah. In that mid lane situation, like Ori, at least he, he's denying the runes away. But so far, Pangolier having a great start this lane. Not falling behind think, whatsoever. Yeah, I think it's a little bit Pango favored lane even. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Ori plays a great puck, so he's getting good harassment dealt over uh, all the time. Every single time he has a chance, he's laying in those right clicks. But ever since the puck nerf as well on the mana cost for his Q, 
I think his laning stage is not that hard for Pango to deal with. Sure, a little bit less spammy. You know, once you get the raindrop as well, that offsets a lot of the threat. Just kind of looking on this bot lane. I mean, that, that kill was quite peculiar on the Gajira, especially when you consider you start with the boots on Tiny. Does it feel like you should be dying in this lane at all? Uh, I mean, he's laning against the Marcy, man. It's not yeah. easy. <laughs> he, uh, he, he probably shouldn't be dying, but he got caught out a little bit. Oh, Pango, going to get forced all the way back here. Oh, there is no a more hydration. Him, though. Yeah. No water. And uh, that was Can the you... last chance. There's no more water in this game. Oh my god, can you can you hydrate on gold? Is that allowed? <laughs> I don't know. Try it. Put it in the <laughs> bottle and drink it. I mean, I saw that in Game of Thrones once. It didn't look like it ended well. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Memories. Toss back oh, on the main to toss <laughs> into Skewer? Okay. They've got the combo. They, they, maybe not. The boss see this hero is just insane. Yeah, it's a nice combo you got there. It'd be a shame if one single ability counters it. I, I kind of wonder, like, do you think if you scaled rebound instead of it just being 800 to start with, it maybe contains some of the absurdity of this hero? Yeah, give it less cast range. Possibly, yeah. possibly. Um, nice damage over on Sven here on top lane. I'm personally under the idea to keep her abilities roughly as strong as they are, but just nerfing her movement speed. So Lich could be caught out. It's a bit deep here, and that soul assumption is pumped. Yeah, you got this great physical damage mitigation on both these heroes. Not so much for the magical damage. Pretty impressive that XXS has now recovered fully in the laning stage here. He is still behind in CS to the Sven, but he uh, he is ahead in net worth. Wow. I, <laughs> you know, who needs CS when you can just keep murdering, right? There's only two kills so far, but you do start to get the feeling that if Lich keeps coming back here, it's just going to lead to chain feed at this stage. So maybe K1 needs a way of sustaining on his own. Yeah, Siamese C doing a good job making this Bane look really OP. Look, even diving tower? Are they yeah. getting this? No, 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 no like, He got into the tree line just in time. He walked back out, he's baiting them, but how do you kill a Visage this far ahead? The Bane is hungry. <laughs> I don't think he has cooldown on, on, on. ready in time, though. He's trying? There's no stun, there's no mana. He didn't use the stun. He didn't look. He has the vision there because he has the he has the power range with vision, so you can see a little bit in the nighttime. Even, but didn't react fast enough to run to a tree line. I think maybe he survives that with stick, or at least gets the mana for for a storm hammer, right? Yeah, Cut I certainly think so. It, it, I don't think he was paying attention at all. He he thought he was safe, and meanwhile Pango going down there, another uh, classic Marcy minute six rotation right there. Yep, yep. You remember that part where you're like, yeah, I like Pango, really good counter to Marcy. Not this early in the game. <laughs> she stopped him from getting the roll of thunder off by just tossing him over the top of her. I mean, it's also the, the dream coil. It's hard when you're playing as Puck. Pango, Definitely. Pango gets shut down a bit as you can't start the ulti. So, so who's the lane that's going to kind of be the saving grace of Beast Coast? Because it's got to be said, you know, even though Magnus has got a good start, when I see Magnus Sven, I, I just feel like they're going to try to fuck arm a lot, even. I think so. This looks pretty greedy from Beast Coast, and I think they might be hitting a bit too late of a timing against what Aster are building up to do here. Like, for now, we're just in very early laning stage, but I'm, I'm looking forward to, like, about eight minutes from now, Aster will come online pretty early and start mobilizing for taking towers and doing things. I can't say that I feel the same about Beast Coast. They, they can play around Pango ulti, that's really it that I feel they have to uh, to lean upon. Yeah, it's so difficult to just come and even stand on these lanes at this stage. I mean, you can see the Lunar Blessing level 3. It does, of course, affect those birds up top as well, which means that K1 has already been relegated to the jungle. It, it just feels like Visage has the freest lane imaginable at this stage. Yeah, it's actually a crazy combo to be able to get that Lunar Blessing all the way up on top. I mean, they're basically flying around with DD Rune right oh now. Like those birds. Uh, they found K1, and he's already low HP. I'll move him to silence. You got to finish him off. You already used the wands. And he thought he was safe here. Nice deep ward from Asta. Yeah, Asta doing a great job of just bullying this carry of Beast Coast. He's not having a great start, even though they tri lane at the beginning and got the first blood on top. They, uh, they're still struggling on Sven now. He doesn't feel like he has a safe place to farm. TP's bottom on uh, Tiny here, okay. trying to defend. I'm gonna bring the Pango down, so they were trying for more than defense, but it looks like a sniffed out Asta. They had the vision, so no bueno on that rotation. Instead, it's gonna be Puck coming down, and 
Invised up, so some free kills to be had here. Avalanche gonna come out. Not easy to escape from this. And K1, he's not gonna participate. They actually forced the Pangolier to use the Roll of Thunder. And Papuka says, thank you very much. But oh, a little almost. bit too soon. Almost completes the TP out. Still, a lot of heroes rotated and pretty much gained for Beast Ghost. Yeah, very uh, very patient there on Ori as he was invis, but he was under a sentry, so in the end they miss out on a kill for the Lich here. If he just used the spells a little bit faster together with the Marcy, they could have gotten that kill. Well, that's happening. You see what's happening top. The excess of the pushing. You know, we mentioned the Lunar Blessing. It, it feels like Luna right now with... <laughs> visage kind of reminds you of the old Drow Visage days, right? Where it's like, oh, I'm not even here, but my Visage is just so big because of me. Yeah, it truly does. I mean, that, that's more than a DD rune even at this stage of the game. You're getting mm -hmm. plus 28 on their 25 base damage, so... Oh, oh lordy. It's bad. Uh, he's, he's used the Warcry already. He'll stun the birds, but I, I mean, you can still get this. The They're birds chasing. are so fast. Boboka's in. And that's... Yeah, no way out of it. I mean, everyone just congregating here for getting that takedown. So he goes down. Fortunately, though, for Beast Coast, there's light coming soon. And I literally mean that. It's going to be daytime soon, and that means the Luna is not going to have the, the complete or uh, um, global effect here. Oh, that's true. And then, you know, you maybe take back the, the vision side of things. I mean, you can see right now, actually, Beast Coast has invested a lot of vision. It does essentially giving a safe area to K1, but that safe area is pretty restricted. Only two camps that, that feel like they're farmable at this stage, especially now with the tier one bot going down. Yeah, he's, he's working on, uh, I mean, he's not really on food stamps level uh, struggle, but he, he isn't having the, the type of start that you want because they're playing greedy, like we said. They want to farm up and hold on to this game, whereas Aster seemed like they're already going to speed up the tempo, taking down that bottom tower, and their top tower is not being threatened meanwhile, so they get a clean uh, clean tower take. Oh, that top tower being there might enable them to do something here. Whisper, call out by the Nightmare, Baburka ready to party, Fiend's group committed, and yes, that's right, it's just the two supports casually taking out the Fat Magnus. Yeah, it was just completely alone. I mean, their two ulties together synergize pretty well. The Fiend script and a full Marcy just right-clicking you. Meanwhile, Gojira has to be careful. It almost feels like Beast Coast are just rushing to put out fires at both ends of the map. Like, they lose the Magnus top. They're having to invest everything just to get K1's jungle back. It, meanwhile, Asta, once they, they see that, they just go back to farm the side of the map, and that's essentially how they're escalating now at the 3,000 net worth lead. Just the 11 minute mark. Yeah, the wards also tell the story. If you pay attention to the dire wards, they have wards that are freshly placed on the on the bottom, middle, and top part of the map, meaning they want to play the entirety of the map, uh, which is a good idea now. After they took down the, the tier one bottom tower, they can play big map and get more out of it, whereas Beast Coast, they're going to be a little bit more restricted in farming territory. Yeah, it, it's a tough one to kind of watch because, like, usually you say, oh, okay, you know, you, you're being too greedy. You can't play the whole map. You don't get to do that. But it almost feels like Beast Coast, to answer either side of the map, has to bring everyone, which means the other side of the map will lose their fight. Yeah, it's easier to play the entire map when you hold on to all your tier one towers. So they've done, they've done a good job so far at holding on to them. But partly that's also Beast Coast, uh, their draft possibly being a bit lacking. They don't have that one hero that naturally rotates and take towers. Like, who's going to do that? Pango? They only take towers if they get kills. Yeah, and the interesting part about Asta I mentioned in the draft is like, this is a team that doesn't necessarily have to take objectives. They're just really good at finding resources and. It's definitely showing in that regard, you know, that they're not rushing to stay on the Radiant side. They're just quick in and out, find a kill, and then return to safe areas. Ori, can he get out of this? It's a puck, of course. <laughs> the right answer. <laughs> I think the worst hero to smoke into. More. Yeah. You mentioned the draft, right? They, they don't have an insta initiation, at least not until Tiny has a blink dagger. No, they, they have some clear clear weaknesses in the draft that are making it difficult right now. And I love how Aster are not feeling any form of, uh, let's say, stress because they're at an advantage. They're just very calmly farming everywhere right now. And Beast Coast, they're looking more like they need to remove this tier 1 top tower. They're, they're trying to mobilize for it now. But uh, we'll see if they can if they can actually overwhelm it. Okay, that, that was a good scan. Gajira is rotating towards bot. They know Luna's down here, so it looks like this many heroes up here. They will get that tier one tower. Just to see if they can follow it up by, by getting into the base. 
the reaction though, there are already five heroes on the mid tower, so Aster corrected reading that, okay, or four heroes, sorry. The birds count as one hero, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> They're all individual yeah, so, people. Okay, come on, Waga. They exist. Yeah, so the, the, they forced them back here. Looks like they're being cautious, though. There's Blink on Whisper. Well, actually, show respect here. A lot of restraint. It's like you just said, Asta, they're not feeling the pressure, and that's important here. You know, they, I think what they're seeing is their ceiling isn't low, right? They can afford to go a much later point in this game without having to worry about Beast Coast. Yeah, certainly. I mean, they, they will scale really hard, um, and they don't necessarily hit their timings yet. You have some items finishing up, like the Vlad's own Visage and the, the Witchblade on uh, on Ori, but their timing is later than this. So you want to keep farming until you let Luna get really massive. Once the BKB and Manta are complete, that's when, when she's going to be ready to just look for non-stop fights. And Luna's definitely getting all the Lumis top of uh, the net worth right now. Quickly just escalating towards the BKB. Won't protect her against the Magnus, but Magnus ben? has his own. Oh my. Oh, what a god gamer. The Tumblr story, did you see it? See, he yep. baits out the Pango <laughs> ulti, takes the DD rune, hops onto the high ground. Pango gets stuck. His car, you know, it's like that Austin Powers scene. He's like, how do I turn, <laughs> go forward, backwards? Like, how do I get out of here? You want yeah, I'll bottom? get out of here soon. Just, just give me a little while longer. Okay, but the whole point, it doesn't last that long, buddy. <laughs> now they're going to turn it to kill the bot line. At least try. I mean, Kajira is very tanky. I think maybe they've overstayed their welcome. Beast Coast rotating everyone down here. Ass, they're so composed. I mean, they commit the, the coil to try and get that kill, but they also see a lot of people reacting down there, so back out. Just Oka, though. They had to RP for a Bane. He's not even going to die. Yeah, wow. RP for a Bane, but how about three heroes going top to, to bring down that Marcy? Oh, that's true. Hate and that's... No, no, she deserves it. <laughs> a good trade, a good trade right there. I mean, that's rough though. Like, you commit RP, you don't get it at all, and... I gotta give it to Simon C, man. So far, he's my pop-off guy. <laughs> Between the Tumblr yeah, story and see that. a replay. We, we get to see the little bunny hop. <laughs> oh, and there, there's the Austin Powers car. He's like, okay, we gotta get out of here. Um, nah, fantastic little, little bait there. I think he has been he's been the MVP so far in this game. The Bane has had really big impacts. And uh, over on the side of Beast Coast, it just feels like they're not really having an easy time catching people. No. Look at Bane, he's just bullying. He <laughs> sleeps in and runs away. You know what makes it even more annoying is like this hero doesn't look fast. Like he's free three, three to five moon speed, not the fastest, not the slowest, has got windless as well, but it's the animation. It's like when he walks away from your gank successfully, like it's almost like you've been beaten up by an old man. It just doesn't make yeah, sense. He kind of just slides away, you know? <laughs> he's like doesn't look like, like eh. he's in a hurry anywhere. Marcy? What's he in a hurry to do? Get out of here. Sun's going to come out, and Persistence of Ari will get him away. Dream Call committed now, so that's going to force out the reaction from Smile. Let's be careful. Won't be able to use the wrong fun or not, but he's now gripped up. Nice interruption of the Avalanche, so it looks like he will be able to protect himself his ultimate, but... This ultimate isn't meant for protection, it's meant to be for kills. Yeah, he even, speaking of protection, he bought that shard very early for protection. So that's against the coil, so he has a solution for when the coil gets dropped on him. He can just turn into the into the ball, curl up into a ball and hope that you survive. But it worked pretty for him there. He did live. <laughs> so you see. They're actually okay. coming for this. They want to fight. God's is going to come out. Let's gear into the RP, so finally the value for Whisper, they'll find two kills. Asta getting ahead of themselves, or maybe not. Eclipse comes in on the backside here. Overwhelming damage, bringing K1 low, only Lich dying so far. Ori needs a save, and the saving grace will come in. XXS arrives for the duel. He'll be able to turn around and take down two, and Asta, despite a dodgy start to that fight, convert it into a favorable affair. Oh my god, Ori God, that fight was beautiful from him. And he had this he had a phase shift ready when he was getting skewered. And if that's the case, there's no way you can actually get RP as long as you just click phase shift during the skewer. You're gonna phase shift before the RP goes off, unless someone stuns you during the skewer, of course. Um, so he stays alive and barely jumps away again, baiting there. They get some value out of Luna ulti. Monet just, you know, connecting to the fight, but back to farming immediately. That that was really, really nice for Aster. It's so elegant as well, because it looks like a scrappy fight. You know, you are taking a long time to connect to that, but now they're going to connect for another fight. Jump in, Bubba Boca, dive in the tier two, BKB activated, and Mone says, Leaf, get out of here, you filthy pangolier. You will not take my support's lives. Okay, maybe you will, but we'll take the yeah. tower. Support goes down, but he's 
pushing. That tower dies, uh, like uh, you said. Small. Small dies to the vein on the backside. On his own. Oh. What? Yeah, there's a tiny bit of help there from the birds, but uh, I mean, this is this is falling out of control quickly. Look for Puck jumping in here, possibly. They want to siege a bit. He's got the plane, has got the dream, cool. He's ready to play, and then, you know, K1, he has got the ghost train coming off cooldown, but he's not ready to fight. He's ready to farm. He hasn't got the BKB yet. Luckily for him, Asta are going to show restraint. That's a good poke, though. They go poke and force out the glyph, and then they back up. Just doing that little move puts the, puts the glyph on a five-minute cooldown, so now they have an opening to take next towers more easily. So really like the, the constraint. They have 10,000 gold lead at 18 minutes. This is, uh, yeah, Aster is showing why they are the top dogs right now of uh, Group B. Yeah, let's just embolden that. They have 10,000 net worth lead at 18 minutes against a Sven Magnus lineup. Yeah, exactly, because Beast Coast just want to try and farm, but that's also the problem. The, the Bane has not been letting them. Like, this is the bully of the game. Yeah, he's still doing it. He's like, oh, there's a there's a Sven here. I don't care. He's used Mask of Madness. He can't do anything. Fiend's group turnaround. I don't know what he thought he was doing. He was definitely not saving a soul. Instead, he was contributing another one to the Asta pool of dead people. And Beast Coast are looking desperate. They wanted to take that fight. They were moving everyone up there, but they weren't really close enough. And again, this is because you have lost so many towers. It's harder for them to reinforce towards these fights. And uh, of course, Asta are just staying on top of things, playing close to each other and utilizing their power spike here. Lead into a, a natural Aegis go in the way of Asta. No way that Beast Ghost can interrupt. And you can just see a replay on that fight. I, I love yeah. the patience as well. Like, Sami C is like, okay, usually I'd be concerned, but this Sven has used Mask of Madness. Yes, yeah, Sami C, his patience was really beautiful. He puts down the Nightmare on, on the Pangolier, I believe it was, right? And started running away. Or, or Lich, sorry, I think I it was. Um, but then he runs away and very patiently doesn't immediately grip, assesses the situation and only once his puck is ready to go in between him uh, and the enemy, then he commits the, the coil because he knows that the puck is going to protect him. Speaking of puck, gets caught out, good control and good kill. Fairy Dragon removed, BKB activated by K1. Mone is going to be the suit, does have the Aegis, got the BKB. And I'll instantly push them back. A deep dive coming out from Smart, but not enough to kill any, anyone on the backside here. I have to just reset and move away. Yeah, I think Monet is just too strong. They can't go through this Aegis and the Luna standing her ground. She's zoning out everyone else. So Tango overcommits alone. They do get the now they get the park. That feels like a good kill. But then they lose three heroes long term. I can't. Yeah, that is, that is very painful, and I mean, they got a good jump on the puck, then they tried to turn that into something bigger, and I can respect that. They're so far behind that they have to be a little bit desperate in how they play, because if you play this game out safely, I honestly think Aster are going to win, like, you know, nine times out of ten, so you have to take some risks. Uh, but at the end of the day, Aster with good positioning, playing behind their Luna, she just TP's bottom. She has Aegis, she's like... They're not gonna gank me. I'm fine. Everything is going according to plan. And it just feels at this stage like Beast Coast, they could get a kill with everything. Oh, the smoke. But then what's left for the rest? Won. He's in position again. Sami C gets the Nightmare out. He's hunting for a second with the Fiend's Grip and he'll find it. Commitment now by the Marcy on top of the Sven. No chance to react. He's just done and dusted. No BKB. It was on cooldown still for eight seconds. Dream Kill committed on the Whisper. He'll be the bonus kill on the side and. Beast Coast, they just don't have a leg to stand on in this game. Marcy's not even done yet. She'll quickly connect under Smile. Stinger, oh, nice not able to in. save the day. That's just going to be another one dead. Okay, I mean, Aster are starting to look like an absolutely fearsome team here against Beast Coast. The, the way they're playing is beautiful. I, I've watched a lot of different teams, but this is the first one in the group state I get to watch Aster. And, uh, I mean, Beast Coast, to be fair, I think their draft is pretty damn greedy, but they call it just 22 yeah. minutes here. Uh, they know they are beat. There's no way to turn this. So Aster with a very fast closeout of game one. Absolute beat down. Aster, a draft that, that maybe shouldn't have been able to pressure as much as it did. But brilliant start to this game. Brilliant plays by the supports as well. Man, looking at this game, well, I got, I, I'm pretty sure I can at least say this for, this for Stream E. That's the fastest game we've had in the group stage. I think I may have had one game that was even faster, actually.